and uh, share my screen. Okay. Are you able to see my screen now? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. All right, so uh, let's start. We were talking about uh, forced oscillators last week, right? So um, let's step back and uh, look at it in a conceptual fashion, right? And uh, let's say you have a swing. Okay. And you have somebody sitting on, on the swing, say your niece or nephew or whatever. Okay. And you're standing behind pushing it. Right. Now, you're not moving, you're just staying at the same place and you're pushing um, the swing. Okay. Right when it comes back. Okay, let's say you're pushing it at a certain rate. Okay, it doesn't matter when the swing is going to come back to you. It doesn't matter. You don't know that. Okay, maybe you constructed a machine that does that. It pushes right when, like th this is the this is the force. It pushes at one moment and then after some time it pushes another time, another time, another time, and all that. This distance is a constant. Some time t, that distance is a constant, right? Okay, now how would you maximize um, the, the energy imparted to the swing? Meaning that how would you maximize that the swing keeps moving and uh, keeps going back and forth? How would you do that? You don't want the swing to stop. Sir, we provide a periodic force like when swing comes toward you, Come, uh, sir, goes from you, then we you push, and then mm -hmm. the energy can increase, and the periodic motion helps us to Very overcome good. the drag, exactly. drag force. Exactly. So, what you're saying is you need to match the time between two pushes to the time of the time period, the time period of the oscillation, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so you need to, you need to match the frequency of your push. Okay, this is the this is omega f. Let's say that's the frequency. You need to match that to the frequency of the of the oscillation. If you do that, then you will impart maximum energy to the oscillator to the swing. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, so that is basically resonance. This is it, right? If you push it at any other frequency. Then you're not doing it. You're not the the the, the swing is gonna uh, you know it's gonna it's gonna oscillate haphazardly, and you won't be able to impart enough energy to the swing to keep it moving. <clears throat> okay. Okay, and that is resonance. In this case, you're imparting energy uh, in in bursts uh, in bursts, but. In, in usual cases, like uh, uh, when you have a, an electron moving up and down, let's say, and you have an electromagnetic field passing through the electron, the electron is located in a specific place and you have uh, electromagnetic field, which has uh, uh, electric field up and down, the force on the electron is a constant. Okay. Uh, sorry, it's, it's not a constant. The force on the electron um, uh, varies periodically. It's not like a, it doesn't come in bursts, but it varies periodically. Okay. And if this electron has some kind of a restoring force, let's, uh, you know, let's assume that it is bound to a, to a nucleus of some kind. Okay. And so there is a restoring force. So as it pushes up, the, the nucleus is going to uh, pull it back in. So there's going to be an oscillation. Okay, but this oscillation, the uh, the frequency of the oscillation, if it matches the frequency of the uh, of the incoming electromagnetic wave, then you have maximum 
energy absorption. Okay, if the frequency of these two frequencies, the natural frequency of oscillation of the electron does not match the, the frequency of your you know, incoming electromagnetic wave, if they are different, then there is no energy transfer. There is very little energy transfer. Does that make sense? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so exactly the same thing happens in a microwave oven, right? You have a microwave oven, right? And you, you have klystron, which basically creates microwave uh, radiation. Microwave radiation is basically electromagnetic wave uh, at a lower frequency beyond red, okay? So these microwaves, they have a specific frequency, okay? And when they pass through molecules, different molecules, different, in, uh, different molecules have uh, electrons bound to different nuclei, right? And they have different environments. Like uh, if you have uh, H2O, uh, you, you have a big oxygen atom and we have a hydrogen atom on both sides, okay? And the electrons, uh, electron is bound to all of these, okay? The electron has a wave function, so it is spread around all of these. And there is a specific restoring force for the electron to this particular uh, molecule. If it is a different molecule, let's say if it is a, a COOH, okay, here the electrons are going to have a completely different environment. Okay, the restoring force is going to be different. The oscillating frequencies will be different, right? Yes or no? Okay, so if you send uh, uh, an electromagnetic wave that corresponds to the uh, to the natural frequencies, natural frequencies of oscillation of these electrons in these molecules, you're going to only excite those molecules, and you're not going to excite any other molecules. Okay, so in in food you have complex carbohydrates, right? They are all like carbon, hydrogen, oxygen atoms. But these electrons in the complex carbohydrates, they are not, they, they do not have the exact same um, uh, vibration frequencies as electrons in a H2O molecule. Okay, so if you, if you tune your frequency to only uh, uh, affect the electrons in a H2O molecules, you can target only the hydrogen, uh, only the uh, H2O molecules, the water molecules. Okay, and not any other molecule. Okay, and so th that's basically uh, the idea of resonance. You use resonance to target a specific molecule. And the same concept, I, I, we talked about it in nuclear magnetic resonance. Okay, you target a specific uh, a nucleus. The, the, in nuclear magnetic resonance, it's nucleus. Here it is electron, where it is nucleus. That's the difference. Okay, so only only when the frequencies match, the frequencies of the the frequency of the forcing, whatever you're using the forcing, uh, however you're forcing the uh, the simple harmonic oscillator, it could be electromagnetic radiation, it could be pushing, whatever. If that frequency matches the natural frequency of the uh, simple harmonic oscillator, then you impart maximal energy. Okay, and that's the that's the resonance. Uh, uh, that's the idea of resonance. Okay. So, uh, I think we talked about it last week also. So I just wanted to refresh it a little bit. Last week, a couple of days ago, I guess. Okay. Now we will go back go back to the mathematics that we've been doing. Okay, and uh, we're going to do it. Um, quantitatively, so how to quantify this resonance, how to quantify the power, you know, how much power you're imparting to the simple harmonic oscillator. We're gonna look at it today. Okay, last week we looked at LC circuit, uh, last class we looked at LC circuit. This time we're gonna look at the mechanical analog of LC circuit. It's pretty simple, it's the same idea, right? So you write the equation for a mechanical oscillator, okay? So you have uh, mx2 dot, rx dot, 
plus SX equals. Uh, so this is your regular, this, this whole thing is your regular uh, simple harmonic oscillator without any forcing. It's just a damped simple harmonic oscillator. This one is a damped SHM, okay? To introduce forcing, what you do is you add, before I, oh my God, take to that. Okay, this is complex, but you, yeah, yeah, this is for ease of analysis, because it makes it easy. If you want to uh, uh, absorb, if you want to obtain the real solutions, you just take the real part of this or imaginary part of it, it doesn't matter. Okay. So this is your, um, this is your equation. Okay, so how are we gonna solve this? You guys remember how you have uh, when you have a non-homogeneous uh, equation like this, how do you solve that? Do you guys remember that? So you find the solution for two things. One is the zero and the other is this. What are those solutions called? Two solutions. Particular integral end? Anybody? No? You haven't been taught this? Sir. Yeah? Sir, x is equals to a to the power alpha t. We can assume that. Yeah, yeah. We are gonna we are gonna eventually assume that, yes. A to the power alpha t. We are gonna do that, yes. And then sir, solve it. Yeah, and then solve it, but there are, what I'm talking about is there are two kinds of solutions. Okay, you might have, you, you might have studied in your uh, school days, there are two solutions here. One is the solution for zero for this damped oscillator, and the other is the solution for the first one, you need to add them both. So there are, there are two, uh, two solutions, there are particular integral, there is a complementary Function or something like that. Do you, have you, you have you come across this particular integral, the term in your school? No, sir. No, no, sir. No. Hmm. Strange. Strange. Okay. Anyway, so there are there are two solutions to this uh, to this damped simple harmonic oscillator. Okay. One. Uh, so you 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 first solve for this part. And then you solve for this part, and then you add these two solutions together. Okay. Okay. We know that the solution for the damped simple harmonic oscillator, we know that solution. Okay. X of t equals some constant c e4 minus rt over 2m. And uh, what is that? e4 i squared of s over m minus r over. 4m square r squared over 4m square times t. Right? That is the solution that we, we derived last time. Remember that? Yes, sir. Okay, so this is one solution. Okay, there is another solution from the forcing term. Okay. Uh, because there is a forcing, this alpha automatically becomes omega. Okay, your 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 system is oscillating at the same frequency that you're applying uh, uh, to your force. So the another the uh, other solution is basically uh, you have to assume it is e power i omega t something like that where omega is here forcing term it's the same omega. But you need to assume this this kind of solution. Okay, you need to find a. Okay, so you know one solution. Which is, from, which is coming from the zero part, okay? And you need to find the other solution. Does it make sense or no? But I'm yes, not sir. getting it. Okay. Okay, so, um,
let's say you have a uh, you have an oscillator okay and you're gonna you're gonna apply a certain force certain uh, oscillatory force to this uh, uh, to this wire to this oscillator okay you don't know the initial condition you don't know what it was what it is doing initially okay so initially let's say it has a certain velocity v okay so the, this this uh, there, is, there was probably an oscillation even before you applied the force am i right yes sir yes sir. so what is that what is that solution how would that look like that looks like this right sir before applying the before applying the force yes oh okay okay yes yes sir yes sir. that looks like this right yes sir okay so there this this is going to go on for a long time depending upon uh, this thing let's say this is really small this is going to go on for a long time right right and then in in the meantime somewhere along the line somewhere even while this uh, this uh, your your system is oscillating you're applying a force okay you're not assuming that the system is uh, at the equilibrium position when you began applying the force you cannot assume that that is very specific you have to assume that the system is already moving the system is already doing something while when you start up applying the force am i right yes sir you mean so, gender huh? i'm sorry in general yes in general so you need to add this solution to your forced solution yes or no yes sir yes okay. sir so that is that is the point that is the idea Okay, so the, the the system is already doing something. It is already oscillating without even without the uh, without the presence of force. It is doing means, something. Means sir, means sir, we uh, in individually we perform the both damping and force, and then uh, some of them. Yes, exactly. Yes. See, okay. It means means means, that, means, mm -hmm. means at a equilibrium positions we give to a some uh, force to occurring the force oscillation and. There is an another oscillation for going on damping, and individually we can make them and then add them to perform a both situation in one situation. That is the linearity uh, assumptions, right? That is the linearity assumption because the linear equation you can add the solutions together. That's what oh. I told you the first time, right? Oh. So you have two solutions, you can add them to find a new solution. That is the beauty of linear systems. You can add solutions, and uh, you, the, uh, the two add a solution becomes a solution also. Okay, so the system is already doing something previously, even before you you apply your force. The system is doing something, and that is this this solution, this uh, this uh, oscillatory. There is an oscillatory part and a damping uh, a damping part. This this thing is going on even before you apply your force. So you need to add that. Okay. Yes. Sir. Okay. So then you're going to find the new solution now. Okay, your new solution is uh, x equals a e power i omega t. You're going to substitute that. Okay, do you want me to do the math? Yeah, I guess so. Yes, sir. Okay, so x is a e power i omega t, and x dot is i omega a e power i omega t. X double dot is minus omega square a e power i omega t. Okay. So you have mx2 dot plus rx dot plus sx equals f naught e power i omega t. So I'm going to substitute all of this here. m minus m omega square um, plus i omega r plus s times a e power i omega t equals f naught e power i omega t. Right? Yes, sir. Right, okay. So I can cancel the e power i omega t. Okay, and I can calculate for A. So basically A is F naught divided by um, minus M omega square 
uh, plus I omega R plus S. Yes, sir. Right? Am I right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, so I can rewrite this. Okay. I can rewrite this as this, like this. Minus I F naught. Okay, I'm multiplying minus I on the numerator and denominator. Okay, so and I take omega out. Okay, R plus I M omega minus S over omega. Okay. I can write it like this. Is it too difficult? I jumped too many steps. Yes. Yes. Hmm? yes, sir. It's okay. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Okay. So yes, yes, sir. Yeah. It's a simple thing. I, I just wrote it in the form that you would understand. This is R. This M is basically L. This S is one over C. Remember? We got the same thing when we found out uh, equation for I for current through an LCR circuit. We got the same form, except for this omega and minus i. Yes, that? sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I just recast it yes, in the same form. Okay, I guess I just recast it in the same form. Okay. There, I, when I calculated i, well, okay, no, I don't want to. Anyway, uh, let's not go there. Okay, so so um, my x, uh, sorry, uh, let's say let's begin with a. A is um, minus i f naught omega and then I can write the whole thing as ZM right where, uh, where Z is your uh, impedance ZM is um, R plus I M omega minus S over omega right this is your impedance right and this is your reactance Yes. Yes. It's the same. It's it's the same thing that we did last week, uh, last uh, last class with your LCR circuit. It's exactly the same thing. Am I right? And you have omega here. Yeah. So your x is minus i f naught omega z m, where z m is a complex number. Remember, z m is a complex number. E per i omega t. Okay, this is your displacement. Yeah, they left, they, they left, man, they left. Like, <laughs> 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 you know South language? I am from Tamil Nadu, man. Oh, okay, then. I understand. And I studied in Hyderabad for two and a half years. So I know. Okay. So X is here, minus I, F, whatever. Okay. And I can calculate uh, X dot. Okay. It's D by DT of um, minus I F naught over omega ZM for i omega t right so what would that be it's f naught over zm e for i omega t that's your x dot that's your velocity this is your velocity okay so we did have two important equations one is x which is a displacement the other is velocity okay this looks exactly the same as that uh, we, we derived uh, last time for I. 
current. Okay, it is exactly the same as current. Okay. So let's look at term by term and understand what these equations mean. Okay, let's look at x equals minus i f naught over omega z m e power i omega t. Now omega, sorry, uh, z m, which is the impedance, is a complex number, right? I plus i, sorry, r plus i m omega minus s over omega. That's a complex number. So I can write it as zm e power i phi, right? Am I right or wrong? Yes, sir. Right, sir. Okay, e power um, i tan inverse of, oops, what happened? Oh, sorry, I think it crashed it. Yeah, crashed. Yeah, the one note crash is quite often, I'm sorry. What? Did I lose the entire thing? Okay, I think I lost it. Anyway, so ZM, as I, got, as I wrote earlier, is R plus I M omega plus S over omega. Right, and so ZM can be written as e power i phi, which is square root of R square plus M omega. Is it a minus or a plus? It's a minus, I'm sorry. What the heck is going on? Why should it crash? I guess one of you doesn't like the class. Kidding. Okay, now ZM is R square plus M omega minus S over omega square, square root times E power I phi, but phi is tan inverse of M omega minus S over omega divided by R. This is all, I mean, this is, uh, you, you understand this, right? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. This is just a polar transformation. This is it's polar, polar uh, you're writing it in polar coordinates. That's it. Okay. All right. So my x yes, is, sir. yeah, my x is i f naught omega z m e power i omega t minus phi. I can write it like this. Am I right? Okay, I just uh, I just made this uh, denominator um, uh, into a yes, constant and the, to the angle about. Yes, sir. Okay, so that is my x. And what about my x dot? We can do the same thing with my x dot. It's not, it's just f naught z m e power i omega t minus phi. Right. Right. This is my yes, velocity. Sir. Okay, this is my displacement. This is my velocity. Sorry, my handwriting is atrocious. Anyway, yeah, uh, just hold on a second. Hold on a second. Just a minute. All right. Hello? Are you with me? Yes, sir. 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 Okay. All right. Uh, 
Okay, so we need to understand these two equations, right? The first thing you notice is between velocity and displacement, there is a, there is a minus i. Okay, so displacement lags velocity by pi by two. Can I say that? Yes, sir. Okay. So do you understand that? Do you understand why? Yes, sir. Because those are vectors lags in a complex plane, sir. No, physically. Physically, I mean, in, 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 you know, in the sense of physics, well, why is that? Not mathematically. Why is there a phase difference between position and velocity in a simple harmonic oscillator? Pi by two, sir. Hmm? What is it? Because uh, when the displacement is minimum, the velocity is maximum. Yes, exactly. Yes, that is exactly why. So you have an oscillatory system, okay? A system that oscillates like this. When the displacement is zero at the, at the equilibrium, the object is moving at its maximum velocity. When the displacement is maximum, okay, the velocity is zero. So displacement and velocity have opposite phases. Yeah. Does it make sense? Okay. So we have just reproduced that yeah. in mathematical terms. That's it. So this minus i denotes that fact that displacement and velocity have, have different phases. And that uh, when, when displacement is maximum, velocity is minimum. And displacement is minimum, velocity is maximum. That's all it says. This one single uh, uh, coefficient minus i says all that. Okay. All right. Now, when is in a, in a forced oscillator? When would the velocity be maximum? We talked about this last week, uh, last class. When would the velocity be maximum? So when the displacement from equilibrium position is minimum? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm saying uh, with respect to omega. Sir, when, sir, when m omega is equal to s by m yeah, omega. Yeah, yeah, with respect to omega, I'm asking, okay? Not with respect to oh, time, with respect to omega. So when the frequency is high, sir. Yeah, when ZM is small, right? Okay, when ZM is small, right? When is ZM small? Yes. When that is small when? S omega minus M omega is zero, right? Yes, sir. Which is basically when omega square equals S over M, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So this is the same condition that we found earlier, connecting the frequency of oscillation of the simple harmonic oscillator to it, to its uh, um, uh, the S and M. Right. This is the same thing we found the first in the first few classes. Now it comes out as the resonance condition. Okay. So the velocity is maximum when omega square is equals is equal to s over m. Okay. So this this condition omega square equals s over m is called a velocity resonance. Velocity resonance. Okay. So does that automatically lead you a question that does that does there exist something called a displacement resonance? Right? If there is a velocity resonance, there has to be a displacement resonance as well. They have the same similar denominator here. Right? We will see that there exists displacement resonance as well, resonance as well, okay? Now, as for, um, uh, as for uh, velocity resonance, if omega square equals S over M, what happens to phi? Hmm? 
what happens to the phase lag between the velocity and the applied force? That is phi, right? This so is your phi is equal to zero. Phi is zero, because this s over uh, omega minus m omega is zero, and tan tan inverse of this over r is uh, it, that is what is phi. Okay, we rem remember we wrote it down like like this here, right? And this is now zero. Okay, if that is zero, phi is zero, right? Right, so this phi is zero. There is no phase lag at resonance. At resonance, there is no phase lag between the applied force and the velocity. Okay, they are in phase. Yes? Yes, sir. Okay, so basically if the object is moving in a certain direction, the force is being applied in the same direction, so the velocity increases. Okay, and then you will, have, you will get maximum velocity. They are in phase. If velocity and force are in phase, the velocity increases. That's obvious, isn't it? Yes, sir. So you get that from the equation. Okay, you get that by max, uh, minimizing ZFM. Okay. So we can, uh, like, like last week, we can draw this graph. This is omega, okay, and this is velocity, right? You get a curve like that, okay? And this is omega equals square root of s over m, okay? Right at that point, right at this omega, you have maximum velocity. On either side, the velocity decreases because they are not in phase. They are not cooperative. Basically, the force is sometimes helping the velocity, sometimes opposing the velocity when they are not in phase. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, we did this last week. Okay, the last time, the last class. Now we see last week. Okay, now can we do the same thing for um, displacement? X is minus I F naught over omega Z M e for I omega T minus phi. Okay, when would this displacement be maximum? Sir, when denominator is minimum. Yes. So how do you do, how do you do that? How do you make sure that the denominator is minimum? Sir, by differentiate and equal to zero, like maximum minimum. Okay, good. Okay, so d over d omega, omega z m equals zero. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Right. Okay. Now I, I'm not going to do this. Okay, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to give you the answer. Okay. The whole differentiation part is basically a waste of time. You can do that yourself if you want to try it out. You can do it, okay? So the number one observation is that, what if omega is zero? If omega is zero, is d by d, by d omega of this thing is zero, right? Is that right or wrong? Let's say omega is zero. What happens to this, this whole left-hand side? Yes? Hello? Hello, guys? Yeah. Yes, are, you, are you guys with me? What if omega is zero? Is this is this equation automatically satisfied? Yes, sir. Yeah, so one solution yes. is omega equals zero. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. The other solution, I'm just gonna write it down. I'm not gonna uh, I'm not gonna derive this. You can do that. Okay, that's uh two m squared. S over M, so this is the other solution. Omega squared equals S over M minus R squared over two M squared. That is your solution. All right? Yes, sir. Sir, 
there the first case is the condition of maxima where omega is zero so max infinite displacement take place um actually <laughs> no uh, yeah, that's a good question that is a good question uh, when omega equals zero this this thing goes to infinity but remember what happens when omega is zero physically you have a force and the force is not oscillating so it's a constant force right right so will the displacement be to uh, be infinity because this is a simple harmonic oscillator which is basically tied to a same place to a to a to a single place tied to a wall or something okay and this is an immovable wall we assume that this is an immovable wall right yes sir yeah so will there be oscillation no sir no and will the will the displacement go to infinity no sir no no right. sir so so yeah the equation seems to say that uh, the uh, the displacement is going to infinity but if you do it carefully you cannot just substitute omega equal to zero what you have to do instead is take omega to really smaller and smaller and smaller numbers and see how the curve goes so if this is displacement if this is omega what you have to do is a really a really small omega you're going to draw the curve for displacement okay and you when you get closer to closer and closer to displacement you will see that the curve actually flattens something like this okay it's not going to go to infinity okay so you cannot just substitute omega equal zero you have to say omega limit omega equal to zero find the solution okay that is more meaningful Yes, okay, because phys physically, if you just substitute omega equal to zero, it gives you absurd answer. Okay, that is why it, the whole, you have to be rooted in physics. You cannot just use mathematics for your intuition. You have to be rooted in physics. Okay. Okay, so basically, what, what this, this equation says is that you will get maximum displacement with respect to omega, with not with respect to time, with respect to time. Uh, please don't misunderstand me. Uh, with respect to omega, at certain omegas, the, the system is going to oscillate with large amplitudes. And that omega is given by this equation. S over M minus R square over 2M squared. See that this, this, is your, uh, this, is, this is your omega naught where velocity became maximum. Okay, we just talked about this, right? Velocity is maximum when omega, the, the uh, applied frequency of, the, of the, the force is S over M. If the force is oscillating at that frequency, velocity becomes ma maximum. But if the force is oscillating at this frequency, S over M minus R squared over 2M squared, then displacement becomes maximum. Okay? Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay, so displacement uh, resonance and velocity resonance, they have completely two different uh, frequencies. Velocity resonance happen when, um, uh, when omega square equals S over M. When the frequency of the forced, uh, the forcing mechanism, that frequency matches the uh, S over M, matches the natural frequency of the simple harmonic oscillator without damping. Okay, whereas in the displacement resonance, the frequency of the forcing is something else. It's different. It's S over M minus R square over 2M square. It is different. Okay, I don't know how to motivate this particular equation because this doesn't have any direct physical meaning. It just comes out of mathematics. Maybe there is a meaning I don't know about. So I cannot help you with intuition. This. Uh, what this says is that the frequency is smaller than the velocity resonance frequency. Okay. Okay. So 
if I have to draw this curve, um, so this is omega and this is uh, your displacement. It would look like, uh, because there is an omega in the, uh, in the denominator, it's not gonna be symmetric with respect to omega, okay? Uh, uh, because when omega is zero, this part is higher. When omega is not equal to zero, uh, this part is lower. So you'll have something like this. Um, yeah, sorry, uh, that's silly. So for every R, this is large R. This is, mm, sorry, this is small R. This is large R. As R increases, okay, the frequency actually does this. Okay, and this, uh, the, the, this, okay. Ah, sorry, this is, uh, this is not a good drawing. This is, in, this is in pain if you guys want to take a look at it, I'm just drawing that. Okay, my drawing skills are so pathetic. Something like that, okay? So this is increasing R. As you keep increasing R, um, the maximum shifts, okay? Uh, maximum shifts actually to the lower ones. Yeah. The maximum should shift to the lower ones, something like that. Okay, this is high, high frequency. This is, again, I drew it. <laughs> Yeah, my drawing is bad. Anyway, so you can go and look at uh, pain. I uh, I would suggest you guys take a look at uh, the uh, book. Uh, it's page sixty four. It's on page sixty four. Okay, so in pain, you can look at it. Um, the graph, um, the graph is a lot more better, a lot better. Yeah. Anyway, so the idea is that you your velocity resonance happens at uh, omega squared equals s over m. This is for velocity resonance. Resonance. And for uh, displacement resonance, it happens at r squared over 2m squared. Okay, this is displacement resonance. Okay, and that is something that you, you take home from this lecture. Okay, there are two resonances and uh, the velocity resonance and, uh, and displacement resonance, okay? There are two omegas, two frequencies at which velocity is maximum and the displacement is maximum. They are not the same, okay? There are two different resonances, one. Number two, the velocity resonance has a higher frequency. The velocity re resonance happens at a higher frequency compared to displacement resonance, okay? And the, and the third thing that you need to take home is that there is always a... a the solution, there are two solutions. One is the decaying solution. The other is the, is a, is a constant, is a solution from the forced oscillator. And those must be added together as I argued in the, at the start of the class, okay? So there is a decaying solution that, that must be added to your solution. You have to remember that, okay? So what we're looking at is without the decaying solution, okay? All of this uh, is without the decaying solution. If you add that, things become a little bit more complicated, okay? Any questions? Sir, what is the sig physical significance of this? Like, what is example for which we do velocity resonance or we do displacement resonance? Okay, good question, good question. Very, uh, so velocity resonance, basically, um, when you want to impart a lot of power to, to an oscillator, Let's say you have a simple harmonic oscillator, okay? Uh, sir? Yeah, yeah, sir, yeah. Sir, can, sir, I think there is an application for a, a huge, huge of mass, I think so. So because if we, when we assume that mass, mass are uh, so much less, mm -hmm. then omega, omega for velocity resonance is 
uh, high but in mm -hmm. case of displacement resonance mm -hmm. the quantity the quantity gets negative sir okay okay Okay, so if the mass is high, so then what is the um, means the what is the behind the scenes logic of that uh, uh, very very tiny particles or very light mass? When the omega for uh, displacement velocity resonance is negative, omega square sorry sir omega square is negative and uh, whereas the no omega square cannot become negative. Omega square become if omega square becomes negative, then it becomes completely decaying solution. Okay. So then, so then the then we we can't apply the uh, means uh, we can't apply for uh, little particle mass means the the particle which has a less mass. You can if the it depends on s also right if the if the uh, if s is large if the spring is really tight. Or if it's, it depends on depends on other factors. You can you can choose your other factors accordingly. You can choose your S and R accordingly to make it oscillate. Okay. Right? Okay. Right? It's not just M. You have other factors also, right? So let's say electron, just an electron. An electron is very small. It has a small mass, right? But it still oscillates. It, it oscillates and it emits light. And uh, light emission is basically electron oscillation, right? Right? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay. So it does oscillate. Okay. It's not a completely damped. Uh, it is, in a sense, it is a damped oscillation because uh, you know once the light comes out, the electron stops oscillating. Okay. But uh, it does oscillate. It is not a. It's not a decaying solution there. Okay. If it is just decaying, if it is just the solution is just like that, then there will be no um, light coming out of the electron. It has to be something like this. Right, sir. Uh, can, then, uh, can there be a possibility that the omega of the displacement resonance be negative? Means omega square. Can there be possible a situation? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, there is certainly. Yeah, yeah. You basically there will be no resonance because uh, at that time, uh, when when omega square is negative, what you get is a is a decaying solution. What you get is this solution. Okay, then you will not you will not be able to call that as a resonance because the system is not even oscillating. Okay, when omega square is negative, okay, what what happens is omega becomes imaginary, 